Hey guys, Aaron here. Uh, quick little video about the now headless, actually it's upside down, Bridgeport. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to rewire this three phase 415 rated motor for three phase 230, which means going from star or Y formation wiring to delta. Now, some of the motors that you would find on a bridge point are dual voltage rated. So they have a wiring box on the outside of the motor that has all of the connections that can go from star to delta really easily. Basically it brings all three, well, six <laughs> ends of the three windings out to the connection box. Uh, we need a diagram. Let me insert a diagram right here. Okay. So you end up with all six legs of the three windings coming out to the connection box. And if you want to swap from star to delta, all you have to do is move a jumper or a bus bar uh, to go from one to the other. Unfortunately, this motor doesn't have that. This motor only has three wires coming out to the outside world, which will be one end of each of the three windings. And the other end of the star that's in the center is buried in the motor somewhere. Now, it may be possible to get this, well, it's definitely possible to get this motor rewound from star to delta. That will be some cost. No, no, yet. I'll phone around tomorrow and, and, and let you know. Um, or it may be possible as another video that I'll link in the description has done to actually go into the motor and pull out the other end and bring that out, right? Because the, uh, the windings are stationary in a three phase motor. There's no brushes or the windings aren't around the middle from the outside or stator, I believe is the term. Um, now, in the other video, the guy had to go from Dallander to Delta. Uh, Dallander is much more complicated, gives you two speeds. Perhaps I'll, I'll link some videos in the description. It's too much to go into here. And this isn't a Dallander wired motor. Uh, anyway, I made a rookie mistake. What I wanted to do was pop the end case of the motor off. I'll pop a picture up of the, the wires again here. So I wanted to pop that end casing off take a peek inside and, and see if what I could see. Uh, unfortunately, what I didn't realize, what I should have thought about, most motors, most industrial motors anyway, uh, alternators are the same on cars. The front, the top and bottom caps are actually held on by really long threaded um, rods. What's the word I'm looking for here? Studs. Threaded at both ends, plain in the middle usually. Nut on either end that clamps the two ends together of the housing. So when I took, when I tried to unscrew one of the nuts on the top casing, what I heard was the nut from the bottom fall off into the belt housing. I have since rescued said nut. Unfortunately, I can't get it back on again. Without taking the motor off. So let me just take you in for a closer look at what I've done and what my plan is, which I may execute at the weekend, I may not, we'll see. So, hold on. Okay, so, if you can see that there, that's the motor. It's currently upside down and it's sitting on the table, which I have wound all the way down. I have rotated the turret 180 degrees so that it is upside down. The quills at the Quills at that end. The drawbar would be up through here. Obviously, I took that out. So obviously, I took that out. I took it out when it slid out and ran into the table, and I had to do undo the rotation and take it out. Anyway, the idea is that I should be able to undo the two nuts, as one on either side, right, that allow you to tension the belt. Undo those and drop the motor off without 
having to try and carry the whole weight of this motor, which is going to be quite a lot. Uh, thinking about it now, I'm going to put some wood on the table for when the inevitable happens. So bear with me. I'm going to pause you. Yeah, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to unhook the belt up here. I really don't want to like have to split the whole top end. I just want to take the motor off. It should be possible. And if I'd read the manual, I'd probably know how I'm supposed to do that. But I didn't. So, you know, bear with me a second. All right, we're back. I have pulled the belt off so that it shouldn't, yeah, get trapped. I have taken the two bolts out of either side. That's this guy, which has the adjuster handle on, and this guy, which is the plain bolt from this side. Uh, so theoretically, if I wind the knee down, The motor should just drop out. Assuming it has enough clearance to do so. <laughs> oh yeah, and I put two bits of wood in. Well, that's me at the bottom of the knee, so. <laughs> that's out. This one heavy motor. It probably shouldn't surprise me. So, let's just shove that back on the table a bit. Now I can crank the head back up to get it out of the way. So, bear with me one second. I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to snug the locking bolts up a tad so that when it's not all hanging on the worm gear, those locking bolts are only supposed to be 50 foot pounds, I think. So, and here we have the motor, the motor where I made the mistake. Looks like could have just done set screws, but then I would have had to have pressed the this off. I don't think I might have to do anyway. Hmm, interesting. More investigation required, I guess, but. But the motor is off, and one of these, ah, there it is. See, there's my rookie mistake. That's what I was talking about. It goes all the way through. Unfortunately, it goes all the way through to that. Does it? Where do I go? Yeah. <laughs> These set screws terminate at like this level, all right, which means that this is a separate part to the motor casing, which means I need to take the pulley off, which is probably going to have to be pressed off. So probably I can see now that it's going to be pressed off. Uh, I don't know, there's a set screw in there. What do you reckon our chances are, folks? kind of want to get that onto something sturdier than the table, to be honest. 
So I'm going to have to move that from there to the workbench behind you. And it's really heavy. So, yeah. I'm going to pause you while I think about that and probably come back on this another day. Um, but yeah, I'll pop in some close ups of the wiring that's at the back of this thing and uh, we'll see where we go. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. If you have any suggestions, uh, one common suggestion has been just buy a static inverter that's rated to run this motor, the power feed motor, or the travel motor, and the suds pump. And I don't really intend on running the coolant pump because it'll make a god awful mess in the garage, but you never know. And at this point, sort of wishing I did that. It's about 400 pounds for a static inverter to run all of this versus the cost of rewinding this motor and getting a VFD and I would be able to run the travel but the travel is broken so I don't know um, yeah you guys let me know maybe in the comments yeah like and subscribe maybe um, you know if nothing else for my rookie mistake and I'll catch you next time Bye, everyone.